Here at Starfleet Academy, there are lots of career opportunities. Which one is right for you? Find out in this edition of Science Alive. I'm with Erin Gregory. She is an assistant curator here at the Canada Aviation and Space Museum. Hello, Erin. Hi, Dave. Now, what is Starfleet looking for in a medical officer? Well, medical officers in Starfleet have kind of unique challenges right. in the fact that they don't just have to treat humans. They have to treat many, many different species. That's complicated. That's very complicated. So they've got to keep all that information in check. They've got to be able to recognize different anatomies, figure out what curious ailments they might have, right? Um, and treat them accordingly. Okay. So how much training is there? We have a lot of training involved for sure, but I think a lot of this stuff, at least in, in our experience, is, is kind of on the fly. <laughs> Learning on the fly. Right. To, to become a doctor, I mean, you get a fair amount of training and then there's an awful lot of in the field experience. Definitely. Is that what Starfleet looks for as well? For sure. I think in order to be a chief medical officer, certainly you need to have a lot of experience. Uh, as a medical officer, you're just kind of getting in and you know maybe you get your first assignment. You always work under a chief medical officer and learn from their experience. And certainly a huge field here at Starfleet is engineering. Definitely. Engineering is very important. Are there specialized positions within engineering? Yeah, for sure. You have engineers and they'll have various specialties within that overall team. And then there's the chief engineer mm -hmm. who uh, is responsible for all the other engineers. What are some of the responsibilities of the engineering division on a starship? So the responsibilities of the engineering division are wide, uh, they, or they vary widely. Um, they have to maintain the warp core, that's mm -hmm. super important to, to keep the ship running. They also maintain things like impulse engines, the replicators, the transporter is, uh, is a you know, section within the engineering division, and basically all the ship systems, life support, also very important aboard a starship. And what are the aptitudes that Starfleet is looking for? For that, I mean, creativity is really big in Really? Because you think that'd be a sort of a computerized sort of physics is physics kind of thing. Definitely. And they certainly have to have really strong knowledge of science and math and, you know, utilize those in, uh, in pretty much their, all their day-to-day -day operations. Mm -hmm. But there is an element of creativity in, in taking those principles and kind of turning them on their head at times whenever it's required, figuring out creative solutions to get more power from one area of the ship to another, right. and, and really thinking in a broad way about how the entire ship functions and being able to get it to do what you need it to do. Another critical command position on a starship is the first officer. What's the relationship between the first officer and the captain? Well, a captain, obviously a hugely important role in, uh, on a, aboard a starship. So the captain has to essentially take stock of everything that's going on. So right. all of ship's operations, they have a team of advisors that are you know, usually the chiefs. So the chief engineer, chief medical officer, his first officer certainly, he you know, takes advice and reports on a daily basis from each of those people and determines kind of, you know, the priorities for Starfleet. Right. He, you know, he gets uh, gets direction from the admirals and all that at uh, Starfleet Command. He's responsible for telling the ship where it needs to go, how fast it needs to get there, making complicated negotiations with variety of species, kind mm -hmm. of understanding their cultural practices in order to make those negotiations uh, smoother. And, uh, and just has to have a kind of a, a wide knowledge base in order to properly make effective and quick decisions right. on everything that goes on on the Starship. Now in Starfleet, do you train for command or do you start in another area and then move into command further along in your career? Command is a stream but you can certainly come to command from a variety of different specialties. So for example, Catherine Janeway, mm -hmm. who later becomes an admiral, she comes up through science. So she was actually a science officer and through her experience over the course of her career, became the captain of a starship. Right. Um, there are other examples of, of chief medical officers that become captains mm -hmm. and command medical ships. Okay. So you can come at it from a variety of different ways, and, uh, but certainly you know, command is a stream on its own. Lots of options here at Starfleet. Aaron, if somebody wants to try them out for themselves, what do they do? Well, you just come down to the Canada Aviation and Space Museum. The Starfleet Academy, the experience runs till September 5th. Thank you, Aaron. Aaron Gregory, an assistant curator here at the Canada Aviation and Space Museum. This was Science Alive.